Our job today is to reestablish the confidence in the CrossFit community that we can do it better. Our job today is to elevate to that level and beyond where we were in 2018. This is week one of three, and we're only gonna get better from here. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people start the same journey, but only a select few reach the destination. The CrossFit Games in Madison, Wisconsin. This year, we give you access to the elite athletes making that journey. And for the first time ever, an unprecedented look at what goes on behind the scenes every step of the way. This Go. is Miles to Madison. Hi everybody, we are in Santa Cruz County, California, just two days away from the head-to-head -head matchup between Kerry Pierce and Christy Aramo O'Connell as part of the live 21.1 announcement. But first, another big name. Last year we didn't have any open, we barely had the CrossFit Games, so last year was chaotic from all those angles. But now we're, we're entering 2021, and we're essentially putting our foot in the ground and saying, look, here we are, here's our season, we're doing it, it's starting, and it's gonna go on. The hardest part about putting on an open event is getting all the right people in the right room and on the same sheet of music. We have a super small crew that works on the open announcement, so a lot of us are doing uh, double duty, if you will. Most of those people won't know exactly what the workout is until maybe an hour before air, or if ever, you know, for a lot of people that are on this team. So there's a lot of things that have to be done in secret. There's also a lot of different things that are happening. So it's a big challenge. Okay, are you guys ready to talk format? So from the top, we'll start uh, a little prior to 4.38 with a countdown to the pre-show. That's a graphical countdown clock. Then come to Sean and Annie on our set. Being back and knowing what this open announcement is gonna look like, I think it's going to serve as kind of a reminder to everybody that we are all part of something really cool and it is going to get back on track and back to the thing that I know we all loved before it was uh, torn down in 2018. As an affiliate owner and as an athlete, I've always been a fan of the sport of CrossFit and it's just an honor to be able to be producing and helping bring some of the information to the fans. Derek will do a quick react to that and toss to Rory, who will be hopefully in the area where the athletes are warming up. The feeling is the same, you know, like the, the other side of the lens, the people that are watching that are gonna get to see it in different languages this time, it's all speaking to them in the same way that it did 11 years ago when we first did it. John and Annie take it to talk about the 2021 season, how um, athletes qualify for the games and so on. I think we should talk about the season, but do the real simple version. CrossFit season this year is totally different, but that's actually not new. We're starting with the Open, but instead of going straight to the semifinals, we've added another stage called quarterfinals. Quarterfinals is taking the top 10% of the athletes from the Open and giving them a, another test, a more comprehensive test. 300 men, 300 women move on to semifinals, and then from those semifinal competitions, you earn a qualifying spot to the CrossFit Games. And if any athlete misses qualifying to the Games from the semifinals by a spot or two, then they get to go to a last chance qualifier, which is actually really cool and exciting for the community. 40 men and 40 women remain, and they go to Madison, Wisconsin to compete at the CrossFit Games. Dave, as we throw down to you with about 10 seconds to go, and you do do it the way that you always do it. 10 seconds, and then when you're ready, use three, two, one, go. Okay. Cool. So any other questions, folks? If not, I think we're good. The team is doing so much work behind the scenes to make this work and seeing everyone come together in spite of uh, the, the pandemic challenges. It really feels like CrossFit as a sport has made a big leap forward this year. While the rules around the team competition have changed this year, one thing has absolutely remained the same, and that is the fact that Rich Froning and company at CrossFit Mayhem are once again the overwhelming favorites to win the Affiliate Cup. Rich Froning won the CrossFit Games in 2011, 2012, 2014, 
in 2015, the fittest man on earth takes Cross and Mayhem to the top of the leaderboard, and they become your 2015 Reebok Cross and Games champions. In 2014, everybody kind of knows I stepped away from individual to focus on my family, um, but be able to still scratch that itch to compete, and uh, team was that way to do that. CrossFit Mayhem is a fitness institution. It starts obviously with Rich Froning, the founder and owner of CrossFit Mayhem, and him being the four-time individual champion from 2011 to 2014. But then he was also able to parlay that into success at the team level as well. Rich is at a part of his career where he doesn't have to play anymore. He still loves to be a part of the community, still loves to compete. I still, you know, have that drive, that want to compete. Um, but to be the, the best in the world at anything, you have to be a little bit um, obsessive. There's no balance in life. And so I knew my family needed to be at the forefront of that. Oh, man. When the Open comes around, I just, I don't enjoy it because they're all individual workouts and all that stuff. And I'm just like, not about that life. It's the shared suffering. It's the beauty of the CrossFit community, I think. It's so much more fun to like, you know, high five your teammates and, and get fired up for them and see them do things. And like I said, you watch them sacrifice and see the sacrifice that they, they put in. And so when we all succeed, it's a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more rewarding. Can't wait for the quarterfinals and we get to start doing team stuff again. This year, the team competition, it was announced that we were moving away from super teams and back towards a true affiliate cup. So what that means is that team members actually have to live in close proximity to one another within 100 miles and they have to train predominantly with each other. So for Team Mayhem, it meant three new people. I think in addition to the shock that we had as fans, I think for Rich, it was the, it was the thought that, hey, is, does this mean that I'm retired? Until last year, never thought of what my life would be after competing in CrossFit and then um, not having the games for teams last year. I was like, wow, it's kind of nice. Honestly, really had no intention, um, especially with the way the rules were when they first came out of uh, competing. But Chase, um, my, my wife's cousin, he wanted to compete and um, he was like, hey, you know, let's do this. Our goals uh, for the team are always to win the CrossFit Games. I don't think there's any other goal. Um, I don't think anybody else on the team has another goal either. I think this is, this is it. What we're going for is winning it. If you want to get better at fitness, you pretty much want to go to Cookville, Tennessee. One of the best things I ever did was come to Cookville because I didn't realize how much your environment like really affected you. And just being around so many positive and just amazing people that really care about me and that I consider my friends, you know. It's so much more than what goes on inside the gym and that's what I've really needed in my life. There's a story about when Rich knew that Haley was gonna be a good fit, is that she just like on an off day like volunteered to do a marathon row. Saw the marathon row at the games, just like, I want to do that. Haley Adams is amazingly proficient at being able to block out all the distractions of the outside world and be a singularly focused competitor, even for an athlete at such a young age. Uh, a couple weeks before the CrossFit Games, we ran a fundraiser for Mayhem. This was called the Legends of the Falls. Uh, it benefited Mayhem Missions, and it was a really cool event. Haley was trepid about doing it. She had never done a trail run before. I do need to, you know, trust myself a little bit more as we get out and do things like that for games training. There's certain parts of the season or where things are more of a risk than a reward. She was, you know, oh, I'm gonna twist my ankle, I'm gonna do this. And in hindsight, I, I should have shut her down and just told her not to do it. I honestly, I thought it would have been a good training thing for her to do. You know when you're nervous and you're, you're like, you're expecting disaster, sometimes disaster will come and find you. That was the exact scenario that happened. I don't have a fear of getting hurt. It's just, I didn't want to do something. And then when I did it, I like broke my foot we would come to find that she fully tore her TFL. It was a very, very severe injury, and like she had to battle with, am I gonna even go to the CrossFit Games or not? 
The 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games are underway at the ranch in Aromas, California. The first time Haley Adams is a young athlete that was previously a teenage champion at the CrossFit Games and who many believe can be the next person to be the fittest woman on earth uh, following Tia Toomey. Haley has a ton of grit and she doesn't back down, she's not afraid. Facing the games with that pain and then just the unknown of her ankle. On top of that, she really got sick after day one. Very, very sick. Haley Adams started with a second place finish and she will end the day with a second place finish. And she looks to hang on to second place overall after day one. Something that would have made any of us, whether we had run that trail run or not, probably go and stay in the hospital for an extended stay. So the poor thing was up virtually all night with a few hours of sleep, unable to hold down food. She's also now thinking, in addition to my ankle, I have these stomach issues going on that are potentially going to affect the rest of my life. Like, what do I do? And that didn't knock her down. She just kept coming forward. She's a competitor. As soon as the clock starts or three, two, one, go happens, like she's gonna make it happen. Haley is tough as nails. Oh, she's a beast. Tough as nails. Beast. I've seen so many athletes rip hands like that and go to their knees and cry in their milk. And Haley hasn't batted an eye. She hasn't complained. In fact, she's doing bigger pull-up sets than she did when we saw earlier. This girl is so dang tough. Watching her at the games with those bloody hands and all the stuff that she did, and just she just. She's a psycho. Haley Adams, who is hoping to hang on to third place overall, and it's looking like it won't happen, but what a future ahead for Haley Adams. That was so close to a podium spot. Like, you know, just be so close to that. And then just your whole year of hard work. Right then it felt kind of like a failure. It was hard as a friend because I didn't want her to think that she didn't accomplish something amazing, like to doubt her how great she was and how incredible she was because she didn't stand on the podium. I'm upset because I didn't make it on the podium in the CrossFit Games. Like, that is insane to me. So just to kind of change my mindset to that perspective and just make myself want to work so hard for the next year, it was probably the best thing that's happened to me. There you go, good, big throw down, nice. I still do PT twice a week, but it's not like fixing the injury now, it's more making everything strong. Easy work today. Day. I'm running twice a week, doing everything that I normally would with like no pain, really. I feel fitter than I usually do in February or March, hitting numbers that I wouldn't dare put on the bar this time last year. Haley's so young that she hasn't even come close to hitting her full potential. The maturity level that she has as a 20 year old, I, that's not where I was at. So I'm still not there. <laughs> she has that drive in her where she'll put in no matter what the work is to get it done. And we have to be like, hey, it's time to chill. Like, you need some rest. That was really hard. The last year, a lot of people, myself included, maybe overlooked Haley Adams we are not going to make that mistake again in 2021. I think Haley Adams 100% has the ability and potential and actually the skill there right now to win the CrossFit Games. Today is active recovery day. Just going to do it easy. Easy one hour cross country ski. My name is Jan Nagoski, I'm 26 years old and I live in Helsinki, Finland. Jonikowski is a guy that always seems to be at the CrossFit Games but just hasn't really gotten to the next level yet. I think Jonikowski is probably one of the most underrated athletes on the planet. I like being in the gym but I also love being outdoors and doing other sports. I find it really relaxing or almost like meditative in a way to you know train outside and rather than being in the runner or a rover for an hour and a half so it's really for me it's really enjoyable sometimes i go back to my hometown in pori and train with my old coach or friend Mikko, Mikko Salo, who won the CrossFit Games in 2009. Is that from, from the uh, Mikko was from yeah. 2009, right? Yeah. 
How much money did you win in 2009? I'm not sure, but it might have been $2,000. Cash. <laughs> it's always fun to come here. Usually get pretty good sessions done. Still extremely fit. I'm in like a decent shape for my age. I still train quite a lot. I have a few limitations for, for some movements, but I still train quite a lot. It's been getting a little bit softer now as he gets older. <laughs> It's always like that with that guy. <sighs> I'm working towards like trying to win the game as hard as I can. I wouldn't say I don't care about the Open, but I'm not gonna put a lot of focus or start any tapering just to be in good enough shape to make sure that I qualify for the quarterfinals. Warm, cool combination kind of takes the, the soreness away. A good restart for the next week and we get a perfect night of sleep after a hard training week. I've broke the top 10 three times now, so that's not something that would satisfy me anymore. Like give it my all again this year and we'll, we'll see how it plays out. It's kind of like really, really awesome to see how good he is at the moment and what's what he can do or has done already. What can he do? He can win the games. I'm Christy Aramel O'Connell. I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and I'm here for the 21.1 announcement. <laughs> Holy, that's so far up. <laughs> I am Carrie Pierce. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm here for the Open 21.1 announcement. In years past, we had traveled the Open and go all around the country and the world doing these announcements, but we decided to, for everyone's safety, just keep it in one location for the span of the three weeks. <laughs> I think I went too far. All if the... you get stuck, all the instructions are on the board. Okay. Like I'm that. here to co-host, uh, along with a, a cold cast of characters, the worldwide open announcements. How many times do we twist? Five. So like just five. The first time we did the open, there were announcements and they were released in a video format, but it was there was no live announcements and there was certainly no uh, no big show productions that we were doing. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully that's harder than the workout. I feel a lot of pressure more on myself to just really make this good because I think the community deserves it. A lot of us have felt disconnected from each other and especially from the greater global community. Of any of the years that we've had the Open, this year is probably the most important. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. And that's that. Oh, man. So for those of you who have done Open announcements before, oh, wow. Typically what we do now is we walk you through the format step by step. I'm not planning to do that because we did that last night with our talent. So we are going to start at the top of the show and block cameras and people who are going to be doing things on the field of play. We haven't produced a live announcement in three years. Two months ago, we didn't even have a production team in this building. All the people you know, behind a camera, all the people that are on set, believing in something and also kind of culturally wanting this to be successful, it really, really matters. Will be here as well. Annie, the Open is upon us. I couldn't be more excited. I agree. I think this has been a really tough year for all One of the things I think that people, they don't realize like how much work and how much preparation goes into pulling one of these things off because I think we've gotten pretty good over the past few years of doing this. But the reason why we do it as well as we do it is because we put in the preparation ahead of time and sometimes that can be not very glamorous and very boring but very necessary. Hello and welcome my fitness family to the 20... <laughs> to the open now to the 21.1 presented by FitAid and the start 
of the 2021. After having done over a decade worth of opens, it's cool that even at this stage, we're still able to have looks and events and formats that are fresh and exciting. I think the community will be really pleased with the open this year, and I'm excited to, to get it kicked off and see what everyone thinks of the tests. Now let's make it official. It's time for the announcement. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, you all sound like you're very fired up, so let's make it official. It's time now for the announcement. You guys kind of warm up, do your warm up thing. Two of the top American Just athletes in the here. female division going head to head tonight. The two of them with 10 games appearances between them. It's really an honor to be here and throw down with Christy. There's always a little bit of buzz around those announcements. So to be part of the first one is slightly terrifying. It's also very exciting. This is gonna be a workout. We have no idea what it is until we step out on the stage and find out about 10 minutes prior. This is where it's go time. Carrie Pierce finishing third in 2020, and Chrissy Aramo O'Connell has been in the top nine at the CrossFit Games three times in her career. Let's get this thing kicked off. I have waited a long time to say this. The 2021 Noble CrossFit Games season starts now. I'm like very nervous to see the workout. Really? <laughs> yeah. 21.1 is and here we go, the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games season is officially underway at two of the This girl is, is, is really something special. If you thought Justin Medeiros was gonna finish on the podium at the CrossFit Games, you were probably related to him. Two breaths and then a fast set of three. Two breaths, three fast, go. Welcome to the open and welcome to the prone pain that is 21.1. 